and welcome back to another episode of The Exercise Engineer. This week I'm going to be talking to you guys about, I think, the 14 main reasons behind why we struggle a lot with fat loss and sort of my approach to how I overcome them, methods that I put in place to ensure that they don't get in the way. So a little bit of background, this month I've done a 31 day like fat loss journey, fitness thing, if you've been following it on Instagram, if not, get on over there and follow the journey at The Exercise Engineer. And I just wanted to try and compile all of the struggles that I've gone through. And I know a lot of struggles that most of us will encounter when it comes to fat loss. So just want to bash through as many struggles as possible in this episode and how you can overcome them. But firstly, I just want to talk about that the solution is often very, very simple. Like, for example, if you want to run a marathon, you buy a pair of trainers, you get a plan and you start running. Like, it's very simple. If you want to get a promotion at work, you can ask for one. You can prove that you're competent, be proactive and like engage in more things to do with work. Um, example, if you want to lose weight. You track your calories, you hit your 10,000 steps, you lift weights consistently. So remember my five non-negotiables for fat loss. That's a full episode if you want to go into detail on that one. So we've got the calorie deficit. So if you need to make sure you're in a calorie deficit, check out my calorie calculator. The link will be in the show notes for this. Strength training, getting your knee up, making sure you get enough steps in, making sure you hit enough protein and accountability. So if you want to hear the in-depth of all those five. That's a completely different episode. Go find it. Go find it now and then come back to this one. But if fat loss was that simple, like if it was that easy, then everyone would have their dream bodies. Like literally everyone, if it's that easy, why not? But they don't. And why not? It's because I said it was simple, not easy. I never said fat loss was easy. It's just simple. Like we know the steps that we need to take, but why don't we do it? And I've listed at least 14 different struggles that I know that I have been through. I know that a lot of close people to me have been through. I know a lot of my members have been through this, through my coaching. So I'm just gonna literally bash through them. So without further ado, the first one is motivation to work out. This one comes at me probably on a daily basis. Oh, Louise, I just don't have the motivation. Just don't have the motivation. It's not motivation that you need, it's dedication. Find your why, make it easy, make it a habit. Habit stacking is such a good method for building something into your routine. So think of something that you already do on a morning, for example, and habit stack it. So that's just making it easy setting things up on a morning, like setting things up on the night before so you're ready for your morning workout makes it easy. If you've got to get all your kit out in the morning, you're more likely to sack it off. Whereas if it's all out there already, you've got your workout clothes there, you've got your water bottle ready, you've got your sweat towel there ready. Or if you go into the gym, you've packed your bag already, literally make it as easy as possible. And remember, it's not motivation. I do not bounce out of bed on a morning being like, yeah, I get to film another workout at 5 a.m. Woo! Like, no, that doesn't happen. That does not happen. If you actually think that I do that, <laughs> sorry to burst your bubble, I don't. I struggle with motivation just as much as most other people. It's just that I found my dedication. Find your discipline, find your why. Why are you doing it? I know that it's gonna make me feel epic and it's gonna set me up for the day and I've got clients counting on me filming those workouts. So for example, everyone in my Train With Loom membership will get those workouts. I can't not film those now. So I've made that, like I've, I've got to be disciplined with that now because people are paying for it. Whereas, but I was doing it before anyway and it's it's asking myself, why like how how was i doing that before and it's it is that intrinsic motivation that i know that it's going to make me feel epic it is going to set me up for the best day that i can have whereas just rolling out of bed like i used to do i used to be like exactly the same setting my alarm for the last possible minute to literally get up shower get out get to work filming that morning workout just 
honestly sets me up for the best day. And I can tell the days that I don't work out because my productivity is lower, my mood is lower. And it's just, it, not, that it's, not that it's a shit day, but you know, it's just not as good. And I don't know if that's a placebo effect or not, but whether it works or not, doesn't matter if it's a placebo, it works. So that's enough about motivation. Just make it a habit, a habit. Make it easy and find your why. Stay dedicated to it and be consistent. Top tip with consistency before I move on is don't miss two workouts in a row. So yes, life will get in the way once, but if you miss it twice, that's no longer a mistake. You've, you've intentionally missed it twice. Just remember that one, okay? Okay, struggles with avoiding calorie dense foods. Like we all love calorie dense foods like donuts and cakes and mm, they are so tasty. And it's because our ancestral processes within us crave those calorie dense foods because they don't know when you're next eating. Whereas now in, in today's society, we don't have that issue as much. It is abundant. Everywhere you look, there is high calorie dense foods. So what I like to do in this situation is think high volume instead of calorie dense. So fill your plate first with lean proteins and as many vegetables as you want. Like, yes, calories are in vegetables, but have you ever heard someone say, oh my God, I can't lose weight because I eat too many vegetables? No. Like, yes, you can, tra you can track them if you want, but realistically, I don't care if you go over your calories because you're eating too many vegetables. It's all the other stuff that is gonna take it over. Like, realistically, the more fruit and veg that you eat, the less likely you are to snack on higher calorie dense foods, which are the things that will take you over your calorie deficit targets. So just think about that next time. Next time you're trying to weigh out your broccoli, no, just get as much broccoli on there and eat as much broccoli, carrots. Oh, bro I love veg so, so much. If you don't like veg that much, this might be a little bit more difficult, but find a vegetable and fruits that you do enjoy and eat them abundantly as if they're gonna run out of fashion. Just keep eating them and you will feel a lot fuller for longer because they are high fiber foods as well, especially if you're pairing them with high protein, lean proteins on the same plate. Those types of foods go deeper into your tract so they will help you keep fuller for longer. They are high satiety foods. So you will feel satiated for much longer. So I always think high volume, high protein, high fiber, high satiety, and the more color you can get on your plate as well means the more nutrients that you are fueling your body with because the nutrients create the different colors. So super important to eat as many colorful things as possible. And as I say, eat the rainbow. That does not mean a packet of Skittles, okay? <laughs> that means as many fruit and vegetables as you want. Like don't, don't cap your fruit and veg, just go for it. Okay, next struggle is finding time to work out. So we've already had the motivation to work out, but people always come to me and say, I don't have time. And as brutal as this one sounds, and I might get a lot of haters for saying this, if you watch TV, you have time to work out. Sorry, like you do. You've got time to work out. If you work out while watching TV, even better. That is also known as habit stacking. Something that you do and you stack something else on top of it to make it more enjoyable, you can do that. So another top tip for finding time is home workouts. You will save so much more time if you work out at home instead of trying to get to a gym then find out that your machine's been taken and you've got to wait and then you've got to change your plan around. No, if you literally wake up, get your kit on, like you don't even have to get your kit on. I used to work out in my pajamas with a sports bra on, easy. Obviously that was before I started filming. Unfortunately, I do, I do now wear actual clothes. <laughs> I don't think I can, I don't think I can rock up. Uh, maybe I will one day, <laughs> just rock up in my pajamas. <laughs> See if anyone notices. Um, but yes, 
home workouts are oh my god absolute game changer if you struggle to find time to work out because you could bash out 30 minutes and you've done it for the day like you've done you don't have to spend 15 20 minutes getting to the gym getting changed finding your machine like you could easily spend an hour and a half to two hours faffing on if you think oh i've got to go to the gym and then oh i've got to get my stuff ready like easily two hours wasted whereas half an hour you could bash out home workouts i actually used to do 15 minutes that's how i started 15 minutes on a morning and then build it up nice and nice and just gradually over weeks and weeks and weeks just set your alarm five minutes earlier and add five minutes on add one round on my workouts at the moment that i film for my train with Lou membership are about 50 minutes long but i always say to especially the beginners that are starting out who are new to exercise and they they're like do do you want me to do the foot and it's like well just start with half an hour just start with half an hour three times a week start there i would rather someone does half an hour three times a week for 52 weeks a year instead of trying to do all five 50 minute workouts and only only manages to do a week and then quits i would much rather that sustainability of fit it in where you can do half an hour and then if you want to carry on do the full 50 minutes or come back and do the rest of it later or you could split your 30 minutes out into 30 20 each day and actually do a mini workout every single morning however it fits with your life is how it's going to work best for you sustainably long term for enjoyment purposes like so 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 crucial so just start small work out what you can fit in and then build on top of it from there because you realize you can do it and it's just that little reassurance every single day it's like yeah i, I did it again oh yeah oh can i add another 10 minutes on today loads of little questions and it's about listing your priorities if fat loss is your priority you will make time for it like gun to your head if you had to fit in a 50 minute workout every morning you would do it because you would find a way because there's a gun to your head so why do we need the gun ask yourself that why do we need the gun there it is it's still your health so technically it is your life your quality of life will improve the more workouts you do, the more exercise, the more strength training, the more cardio, you're strengthening your bones, your muscles, your heart. All of these things are going to lead that fuller, more high quality life. So just think about your priorities and just ask yourself, gun to your head, would you make it work and how? Like, how would you make it work and use that? But I find mornings all the way. Mornings, hands down for me, just get it over and done with sounds like to the point but get it over and done with then you're not thinking about it all day you're not thinking oh i still need to do that workout later no just get it done now not run out don't know when you're listening to this podcast now but just go for it <laughs> okay next struggle is i don't know how many we're up to by by the way i probably might find more along the way as well finding time to cook healthier meals so what i do here is meal prep so save money, save time, save calories. The amount of people at work, sorry if any of you are listening, who buy meal deals or itsu or any, like eat out every day and spend like 15 to 20 quid a day on food and coffees. It blows my mind. It actually blows my mind. I take my breakfast and lunch to work every day. Yes, I do treat myself to a, pro a proper coffee most days, but, um, I have started drinking instant, just, don't know why, that's just pure not, it's not enjoyable, is it? Who, like, no. Anyway, but meal prepping is also a game changer if you struggle to find time to cook healthier meals. If you don't, like, struggle with time issues and you enjoy cooking your full meals on an evening, absolutely fine, this one is not for you, but if you find yourself grabbing your phone thinking, or you grab something on the way home from work because it's easy it, like takeaways on the phone oh, I deliver oh, let's just get a takeaway it's just easier make it harder for a start and make meal prepping easier like having healthy food in the house makes it easier because you don't have to go out and get your ingredients so do a big weekly shop 
work out what recipes you want to do before you do your weekly shop, obviously, then you've got everything you need and then meal prep. So you don't have to meal prep absolutely everything, but I do find breakfast and lunch, get them sorted and then you can do like on and off bulk cooking for your evening meals as well. Obviously it depends how many people you are cooking for and that's why I say breakfast and lunch, usually you are just cooking for yourself. Whereas an evening meal, you might be cooking for a family, a partner, etc. If someone else is cooking for you, ask them if like you need to communicate with your goals and stuff like reduce certain portions and bulk out the bigger portions of like protein more vegetables all those stuff that we discussed earlier but meal prepping will definitely help you save time so for example sundays i go do my weekly shop it takes me 15 minutes to walk there 20 minutes shop 15 minutes to walk back and then i spend an absolute maximum of usually an hour and a half doing five breakfasts and four lunches because on Fridays I go to the street food market where I get my salad kitchen. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Um, so, and that, that's within an hour and a half and that's nine meals. Like, yes, my breakfast is only overnight oats, but I know that that's fueling. I've, I've had that every working day for the past pff, nearly four years now because I know that that fills me up. It's delicious. It's, I'm hitting my macros, like it's got high enough protein in it. I thoroughly enjoy it. And why, why change something that's not broken? It's, it's, it's perfect for me. And I've just fed it in a nice little pot. But meal prepping, try it now. I've got loads and loads and loads of recipes within my Train With Lou. If you sign up to my weekly um, email newsletter, I post my weekly meal prep recipe in that so you'll get that for free if you sign up to my weekly newsletter anyway so get on that and you'll get a free workout so it's a no-brainer really if you haven't already signed up to the weekly newsletter that is in my insta bio at the exercise engineer or it's in the show notes below so just crack on guys i'm literally giving it to you free workout a week and free recipe a week get on it next struggle is the enjoyment of the whole process so a lot of people think, oh my God, I've got to go on a diet. I need to lose some fat. And I think it's more of a mindset thing. But firstly, let's cover what don't you enjoy. Let's work out which bit of it you're not enjoying. Is it the gym? Is it the diet? Is it the restriction? Is it boring? Are you cutting out your favorite foods? All of these things have solutions. So if you hit the gym, Again, home workouts. What aren't you enjoying? Maybe you do enjoy the gym, but you're not enjoying cutting out all your favorite foods. Why are you cutting out your favorite foods? Yes, they might be more calorie dense, but if you eat in an 80-20 mindset, so 80% of the time you are fueling your body with high volume, high protein, high fiber foods that are gonna keep you really full for longer, try and keep them like whole foods that are really gonna fill you up and then 20% of the time you can have those things that you know you're gonna enjoy you can have those treats like have a donut if you want have a chocolate bar often a lot of nice protein bars these days you can have that as your pudding and you're getting your protein in as well some of them are a little bit dodgy like mm. And be careful with the ones that just say high protein on, especially the ones in supermarkets. They're not always often high protein. They're just like ridiculous amount of calories for something that just tastes nutty and weird. So always check out the macros on the back of those, just a top tip. Um, but in terms of enjoying the process, if you don't like going to the gym, if you don't like working out, if you don't like going for runs, don't do that. Find movement that you do enjoy. Like, I love running. I never used to, to be honest, but I love it now. And I do it for fun. Like, oh my gosh, I went for a run this morning and it was raining and I still enjoyed it. Like, the old Louise would have been like, what the hell are you doing? Like, this is not fun. But I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. It was before everyone, before London had woken up and I was the only one 
running along the river and it was it just it, oh amazing but if you don't like running don't force yourself to run i've done a full other episode on if you want to start running or you don't think you like running but ways to make it easier and more enjoyable go check that out but i would always recommend a bit of strength training as well even if that is just body weight but in terms of enjoyment find something that you do enjoy like do you enjoy playing badminton if so go two or three times a week do you enjoy swimming if so go two or three times a week like fit it in and make sure you enjoy it because the more enjoyment you get from the process the more likely you are going to sustain it and keep up with the progress and it's not a diet for a month and then going back to your usual life because you will just you'll resort back to your original body if you lost a stone over a month and then went straight back to the person you were before the diet you will get the body back from the person you were before the diet if you don't maintain the the exercise the i say diet it's not a diet but it's it's what the foods that you choose to consume let's put it that way so enjoyment is 100 percent key to sustainable results um so yeah would definitely recommend that okay next one Whew, i think we're nearly halfway guys <laughs> struggles with hunger cues like this one i find difficult at work because it's just boredom it is it is boredom that will make you want a snack and you're thinking oh i'm hungry but are you ask yourself are you hungry enough for an apple if you are fair enough you're hungry if <laughs> you're not hungry enough for an apple you're just bored so try and distract yourself go for a walk eat an apple or top tip have a high protein snack because that will definitely fill you up because again it goes deeper into your tract and you're helping your recovery from your workout as well so you get two different benefits from having your high protein snack um another one that a lot of people say is drink more water and yes drinking more water will help with like i oh, you might just be thirsty um but I'm not one to say, oh, if you're hungry, just have two pints of water. Like, yes and no, that will fill you up to a certain extent. But if you are actually hungry, I want you to have that high protein snack. Don't sit there and suffer. I just want you to ask yourself, are you actually hungry? Are you just snacking like aimlessly? Like a lot of people, especially at work, when we're sitting at our desk, will just mindlessly snack and those are the extra calories that we don't really realize we're consuming and chances are you're not going to feel full after that snack anyway because you are mindlessly eating it you're not focusing on how that food is going to make you feel afterwards is it going to fill you up chances are no so really focus on your food that you're eating try not to eat while you're distracted like i'm really bad for this like i will sit and watch youtube videos sometimes while i eat my dinner or i'll sit there making a reel or something like that i know a lot of people will sit in front of the tv if you can sit around the table talk to people i know that's still a distraction but focus on the food you're eating and how it makes you feel i know that sounds a bit deep and woo woo but is it filling you up and if you if you do get to a fullness stop eating and this is something i really still need to work on i cannot leave something on my plate i really really struggle with food waste and it is still i still have to work on this on a daily basis i cannot leave or waste food but something that really really resonates with me and um a, a, it was on a on a different podcast um so good it is your body is not a bin if that food is wasted it's wasted either way whether you eat it or not it's waste so put it in the bin your body is not a bin and that just it really resonates with me but i've got to remind myself of that nearly on a daily basis that if i don't want to if i don't want to waste food i really really struggle especially other people's food as well i'm like that's their waste why do i feel bad if I don't eat that it's really strange but again gotta to work towards these things every single day 
So the top tip for that one was ask yourself, are you hungry enough for an apple? Okay, next one. Understanding how to fuel your body correctly. So before I'd done my PT qualifications, level four, whatever, knowledge will potentially stop us from losing weight because we listen, there is so, so much information out there that we don't know what's true, we don't know what to listen to, that like there are so many different diets, they're like, oh, you should cut out on fruit. Like for example, the keto diet tells you to not eat fruit, it's just ridiculous. And then you've got plant diets that are no meat and it, oh, there's certain like unprocessed foods and if you listened to all the information that you read, we would literally be drinking water. And then even then, I'm pretty sure there's something out there that says don't drink the water. Like there is far too much information out there. So knowing what information to take on board is key, but ideally it's what fits in with your life. So that's with choosing various diets like intermittent fasting. That might work really, really well for you because you're not really that hungry on a morning anyway. So it's actually fine if you have your first meal at 12 and then stop eating at eight, that might be fine for you. For me personally, I'm ravenous by half past eight in the morning because I've done my morning workout and walked to work. So that wouldn't work for me, but equally I could finish eating at six or something like that. And that would be my fasting window. So, but understanding how to fuel your body correctly, and I did a full other episode on just macros, explaining all the different types of food. It doesn't obviously go into that much detail, but it is a good basis to go off in terms of how much food throughout the day should be from carbs and what percentage of protein we should be eating, what grams, how much fat should we be eating. Like loads of people try and avoid saturated fat. That's not actually that bad for you in small in in the correct doses so it's just understanding how to fuel your body correctly which i always often find is so so crucial to it actually being successful because if you think you're doing all the right things and you're confused like you might go out for dinner and order the salad and then be really confused why you're still putting on weight or you're trying to eat salad every day but actually that salad might be covered in dressing croutons and all the yummy stuff that makes a salad extra yummy but actually yeah that that salad could be a thousand calories easily easily a thousand calories with the amount of dressing like especially the huge ones that you you often get and i'm not saying that's a bad thing if that's what you want but if you wanted the burger order the burger because chances are the calories are very similar just maybe don't get the chips ask yourself do you need the chips can you have a burger with a side salad instead and it's that sort of, that's leading into a different one. So struggles with eating out. Um, I know like, especially menus that don't have the calories on it, but also the menus that do have calories on can really put you off getting what you originally wanted. But it is just, again, understanding what you're fueling your body with. And I think when you eat out, the calories do seem a lot higher because they are cooking with maybe more oils and seasonings and making it all yummy and delicious, more dressings on it. And usually they are oil based, which is very high in fat. So you will end up eating more calories if you do eat out more. Um, so the method that I like to use for eating out is the two out of four method. So if, so you've got four items really, you've got starter, main, dessert and alcohol. Like most people, will have three or four of those if you eat out. If you just choose two, if you eat out quite a lot, you're gonna have to control your calories somehow. And eating just two out of four of those, choosing two out of four will make such a difference. So maybe you're really craving something on the starter there, but you're looking at the desserts thinking, mm, don't really fancy any of those, I could leave those. So you choose a starter and a main, or maybe you wanna definitely have a, a bottle of wine to share with the table so you're like actually no i'm going to choose alcohol today so you have you choose main and alcohol and that will often be enough as well or maybe you really fancy a dessert so you go for main and well usually main is it main is key but if you if you just want to start on a dessert go for it doesn't mean you get the alcohol though you still only choose two so you may as well order the main <laughs> and fill yourself up but i really enjoy 
that method it's it's just something to help with the control but feeling like you can still order anything you want on the menu as long as you just choose two out of four of those instead of trying to choose the lowest calorie thing for all of them choose what you want but only have two out of four top tips um yeah it's just about working out what fits in your life isn't it um right so tracking calories then that moves on nice and swiftly so if you're looking at a menu and you see all the calories that's nice and easy if you're eating out and the calories don't have the menus don't have calories on them you can often work it out but i would always recommend overestimating especially if you don't really have a clue always overestimate because chances are they've doused it in oil as i was saying before so there will be more calories on it than if you made it at home yourself um if you really, really struggle with tracking calories and it is not for you, you, you hate the thought of it, it's tedious, it's boring, either try it for three weeks, three or four weeks, just to understand the main, the main meals that you choose in your life, just so you understand the fuel that you are putting in your body with the main meals that you choose to have. Or you could do the three plus one method. So this is three main meals and one snack every day and that way it, that'll cut out the the snacking like that you don't necessarily need it'll just again add that little bit more of control it, and you won't feel that restricted because it is just three main meals and one snack so less with the restriction just more of a plan more feeling like you you you're getting somewhere and it does really work um as well obviously just don't have a whole chicken or like <laughs> don't don't be an idiot with your three main meals like yes again from before choose highly nutritious foods high protein high fiber still fill your plate up in that way that we were just discussing don't just think oh yeah louise said i could have three main meals so i'm gonna have three burger and chips every day not quite what i'm saying but you, you understand, like you can still eat a burger if you want. As I said, burgers aren't bad. They're actually a very good mixture of protein and carbs. It's fantastic, it's a fantastic food. Just not necessarily if it's deep fried. Anyway, so struggles with binging on weekends. Again, big struggle for a lot of people. They do really, really well in those first four days, Monday to Thursday, and then it hits Friday and they just go, fuck it let's go and it's like why i i well i'm exactly the same i i have done that so many times and totally totally understand but if you want to try and move towards fat loss and not totally throw it in the bin every weekend and literally start again on monday let's try the maintenance method at weekends so your first four days you're doing really well in your calorie deficit Friday, Saturday, Sunday, go to maintenance calories. So you might increase your calories by 400 just for those three days. So you feel like you're getting more food. That can account for extra more alcohol if you want. Those extra activities, eating out, that could account for the extra 400 calories. But pausing instead of moving backwards is key for sustainable fat loss. So I've said this before, um, but I'll quickly go through it again if you haven't already heard it. If you're getting from A to B and you're taking four steps forward and then at weekends you take three steps back, it will take you so much longer to get to B. Whereas if you took four steps forward on your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and paused for three days and then took another four steps forward and then paused and then, to, yeah, you get the picture, you will get to B so much quicker instead of, trying to restrict, totally binging, and then literally taking three steps backwards. So you're not fully starting again, but you have taken three steps back. So you may as well have only taken the one step forward. I hope that makes sense. And it is such a good analogy for just accepting the maintenance for three days. Accept that you're just gonna stand still for three days and then get back on it on Monday where you can progress forward again. You'll get to your fat loss goal so much quicker if you just pause instead of walking backwards top tip top tip so 
this one is um this one is a brutal one for me as especially struggles with avoiding office treats yes yes we see them nearly on a daily basis in my office it's an absolute killer it really is oh the so many so many treats the best way that i've been able to avoid these i mean it's so difficult like i really don't sometimes out of sight so make it difficult so if they're out of sight you're not constantly thinking about them get get them out of your head like change your environment if you need to move desks so you're not right next to the the, the table where everyone puts their treats on move your desk like seriously that will that will have such a big impact if you've got to get up and walk to the other side of the office to get it in which case you'll be getting your knee up if you do end up going up to get a snack whereas if you sit right next to it either move the table where everyone puts their snacks or move your own desk like literally move another tip for avoiding office treats is take your own snacks as replacements this does not mean eat all your own snacks before 9am and then have the office treats as well if you know that you, if you think you will do that don't take your own snacks because you'll just end up eating double and one of the things i actually i used to introduce into this is plan for those snacks to be there so if you're eating 80 20 20 percent of your daily like calorie consumption could be from those snacks so understand how many of them you can eat spread them out throughout the day and actually include it in your diet because it, instead of just being like oh i can't eat any of those oh oh i shouldn't really oh i'll just have one oh, oh no plan it into your day if you know they're going to be there if it's a constant like they get the same biscuits in every week or blah 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 plan it into your day plan it into your calories and revolve i know that sounds a little bit backwards but if you really really like so many people struggle with if it's in front of you you'll eat it and i know so many people that can't say no to treats like that so if you can't say no to them plan it in make sure you understand how much of it you'll be eating and work the rest of your calories out around it so when you meal prep in you know what sort of calories you need to aim for for your main meals still as many fruit and veg as you want high lean protein meals that's all still incorporated but for your snacks you can choose the office treats that's just one way to go about it if you're good at saying no i'm not going to have any of them absolutely fine sometimes the all or nothing mentality can mean if you just end up having one you end up throwing it all in the bin and then eating the whole pack which isn't great like that's why i think everything in moderation if you do plan it into your diet that's even better um oh what was i gonna say oh there was a really good oh yeah the other thing is think about how good that snack realistically is is it something that you absolutely love we call this one the if it's not a fuck yes it's a no like 100 percent. if you don't look at that tree and think yeah i could have one like are you uh, no is it worth throwing your diet in the bin for no probably not if it is maybe it's a wagon wheel or so <laughs> i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna get so much stick for that but i love a wagon wheel or like um one of those tunnocks things with marshmallow in the middle love that as well or you know a chocolate hobnob the king of all biscuits comment below your favorite biscuits like tell me if if it's not a chocolate hobnob get out they are elite i haven't come across a biscuit that beats a chocolate hobnob yet especially a dark chocolate hobnob oh anyway that's not the purpose of the pod if it's not a fuck yes if you don't get really excited about it and really enjoy that treat and enjoy it don't feel guilty if you think oh actually yeah that's a good snack like i am gonna really enjoy that make sure you do enjoy it don't feel guilty for eating it afterwards just don't eat the whole pack or maybe you do i don't know just try not to like that oh that comes down to the law of diminishing returns so we apply this quite a lot with accountants i think if you're an accountant listen to this you'll already know what this is but it's pretty much like the more you eat something the less enjoyable it will get 
obviously not to do with money but that's how we apply it to fat loss like eating a whole pizza that first bite that first slice is going to be sensational you're going to be like oh yes this is so good it's so tasty but the more of it you eat it's actually it curves down because the enjoyment doesn't get any more and if anything it will start to get less and less and less because you get in fuller so when it comes to eating a pack of biscuits you if you're asking yourself oh shall i have a third one that third one is not going to taste any better than the two you've already eaten if anything it's going to taste worse so just try and remember that especially when you finish a pizza or all the other treats and or anything you can apply it to literally anything that you enjoy any form of treat or any in, in that 20 with your 80 20 method ask yourself is it going to taste better the third time no no it won't you've already had the most enjoyment out of that food as you're gonna get so you may as well not have another one or save it for tomorrow and then you get the enjoyment all over again anyway so struggles with constant cardio i think a lot of people think mm, fat loss i've got to just go to town with cardio um yes and no so cardio is a fantastic way of burning calories especially if you are running outside or like you're getting other benefits out of it as well but for, for a sustainable and healthy lifestyle you need to be doing some form of strength training as well whether that's body weight or in a gym or a home workout something that is going to help build your muscles and build your strength improve your posture like there are so many other benefits of strength training but I've said it before the more calories you have no start again the more muscle you have on your body the more calories your body will naturally burn because muscle has it, it uses more energy to be alive on the body than fat does so the more muscle you have the more calories in the long run that you'll be able to eat like a lot of people call that reverse dieting working your calories up stuff like that so yes with the cardio it will help you in the short term but like when, when you're working towards the fat loss goal but long term you need to be building that muscle to get that sustainable fat loss and ensure that you maintain your results as well and it also mixes up your working out works out your training program and just mixes it all up so it just keeps it a bit more enjoyable for you as well okay nearly there nearly there guys struggles with friends not having the same fat loss goals so one thing i think about here is you cannot fill up someone else's cup without filling your own up first so you need to be selfish you need to prioritize yourself focus on you if you want to be a good friend you need to fill up your cup first if your friend or partner doesn't understand why you're trying to lose fat or anything they're trying to be like oh no come out blah blah blah. that is normal that will happen for the rest of your life more likely just tell them your goals communicate with them ask them to understand tell them that you'll go out for x y and z but then you'll move on to lime sodas maybe or you'll go out but you you're only you, you're not having start main and dessert you're only having main and alcohol or maybe you're only yeah, yeah we've already been through that one but you need to be selfish in this case if fat loss is something that is really really important to you right now and it is one of your priorities you really really value it you need to put it first you need to prioritize it and just communicating that to the people around you that this is the journey you're about to start and you just want people to appreciate it and understand and not try and pull you off the bandwagon that is key just let them know that that's the plan and often more often than not they will understand and they will help you towards that goal as well and chances are they might be like oh that's a good idea i should probably do that as well and they might come along for the ride so even better to have a buddy there for accountability super super important that's why we have the train and loom membership we have the facebook group where everyone posts such a good little community so supportive supportive is the word you need someone there to help you through it okay struggles with drinking alcohol 
I think the first one thing I'm going to mention here, so I'm just going to speed up a little bit because I realise I'm rambling on for quite a while now. So the struggles with alcohol is there's a lot more calories in it than people think. So those really tasty cocktails probably have more than 200 calories in it. Pint of beer, probably more than 200 calories in it. Bottle of wine, about 750 calories in the whole thing. So obviously maybe like a large glass is like 200 calories. Like we've got to understand these things. So if you want to go out, absolutely fine. If you want to drink alcohol, alcohol, well, I've already had a few. If you want to drink alcohol, absolutely fine as well but understand what fits into your calorie goal is crucial if you are going to sustain this fat loss goal or maintain it or whatever so a few examples a gin and slimline tonic or maybe you want a vodka lime soda those diet drinks i would recommend like if you can i think they taste exactly the same personally why would why would you have why would you choose a tonic that's 150 calories when you can have one for two i think the test is the same and it's the gin that's the over overpowering thing anyway so you're only getting the alcohol the calories from the alcohol um but yes obviously still enjoy yourself don't just stop life just because you're on a fat loss journey that is not what it's for that's not why i'm telling you all these things on this podcast i don't want you to be like no louise said i've got to cut out all these things no i'm not saying that at all just understand that that might be why none of your diets have so far worked because you just throw it all in the bin at the weekend and understanding that actually you can still go out and only have two drinks and still enjoy yourself you can still go out and not have any alcohol and still enjoy yourself like i haven't drunk for a good few few weeks now um some people might be like god louise that's that's not that long but then some people might be like whoa how have you done that like it's all perception i think i can do it i've i do dry january every month every <laughs> yes <laughs> yes i do dry january every month guys no every year and i don't find it difficult at all because i've already made the decision that it's like a no I'm not having any alcohol for the next four weeks and uh, often a lot of people are like I don't know how you're doing that and it's like well I've already made the decision so when people offer me a drink it's like oh do you want a pint no I've already made the decision once it makes it so much easier if you only have to make the decision once like it, decision fatigue is such a crucial part of why people often fail diets because they can say no they can say oh no it's fine no it's fine no it's fine but that seventh time that someone asks they might be like oh yeah go on then because you've you've made that decision so many times that it's like you you do get tired like reducing the number of decisions that you make throughout the day will help you get to your goal and that sounds so minor but why do you think some really successful people wear the same clothes every single day it's one less decision to make. Just think about it like that. Okay. And final, final struggle, guys, is struggles with the cost of the gym. So a lot of people will say that it's just so expensive going to a gym. And I totally back that. I was just paying, um, well, I'm not, I'm not going to reveal, but especially in the centre of London, ridiculous amounts. So running, totally free. Just get a good pair of trainers. Walking, totally free and you literally only need as long as you're eat like in a calorie deficit upping your neat which is your pretty much walking your general movement throughout the day you can still lose fat you don't need to be going to a gym to lose fat the exercise that all that's all a byproduct of enjoying it and becoming stronger and leaner but the actual fat loss comes down to a calorie deficit which you can do from walking and eating well so walking is free running is pretty much free just need some trainers and home workouts buy one kettlebell and it'll change your life literally one kettlebell sign up to my weekly newsletter get a free workout every single week maybe do that three times a week or like use yes use the week befores mix it up or join the membership where you get all five workouts a week you can bash through as many as you want you get the full backlog of probably nearly 500 workouts now I, I've lost totally lost count but it's between four and five hundred workouts that I've filmed you get access to all of those within the membership so there is no excuses if you don't want to join the membership 
there are loads and loads of free workouts on YouTube. So many, just find them, access them. Find the style that you like because you don't need to pay for a gym to be healthy, to lose fat. You don't need it. So the cost of a gym is a terrible excuse because all you need is, you literally need body weight. You could, you, there are so many on YouTube body weight workouts that you can do for free at home. And then it comes back to motivation and it loops back down. So start the podcast again, go back to the motivation one right at the start and get cracking. I could literally go on and on about the amount of struggles that people have and struggles, whether there are struggles, excuses, anything. I have probably gone through 95% of those myself, much like most of my team have before they join the Train With Loom membership. It's normal you're not the only one struggling with those things. So if you need support, if you think you're ready to hear how I can personally help you, I my, engineer, my background is engineering. Like I literally get paid to come up with solutions at work. So hit me with your biggest struggle and I will come up with a solution for you. And it won't necessarily be join my train wheelie membership, which it should be, but <laughs> not necessarily. It's not right for everyone. And I understand that. So hit me up in my DMs, comment on this, literally anything. You know where to find me at The Exercise Engineer at my website, theexerciseengineer.com, I think. Um, but yeah, I hope you really enjoyed that, that episode, guys. Sorry if I have rambled on, but there was so much to get through. And if you think I could help anyone that you know from listening to this podcast, send them this pod their way and they will 100% benefit from it as well. So mwah, I'm going to love you and leave you there guys. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe.